that committed sin is of the devil. Jesus told them, say, can Satan cast out Satan? If you are living in sin, you are of the devil. So don't move away from sin. You can't be committing fornication and you say, yeah, I bind that devil. The devil will bind you because you are in his camp. So he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Say, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Underline that phrase, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That is why he manifested. He has destroyed the works of the devil. Satan's works are destroyed. When you hear that the, 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 the rulers of darkness, the rulers of this world, Satan may be a ruler only of darkness, not of light. He may have power only in darkness, not with us in light. The works of Satan are destroyed and we are to execute the manifestation with the authority and the power that we have in the name of Jesus. Look at 1 John 4. 1 John chapter 4. Just go to the next chapter. Verse 4. Let's read it together. Ye, I can't hear you. Read it, read it, read it. You know, in the days of Elisha and his servants, when the the army of Syria came against them in 2 Kings 5. He, he, is it 6? He didn't, and Elisha, and the servant said, Alas, Master, what shall we do? He said, They that are with us are more than they that are with them in the Old Testament. We have that. But we now have an additional higher thing in the New Testament. Not just with us, in us. Greater is he that is in you. God positioned himself through Jesus to be in you so that you are inseparable. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. That should be a set to thing. Anywhere you meet anything of Satan, anything of the devil, you are, there is a greater one inside you. So you call from a superior standpoint to whatever the devil is doing. Not getting afraid. Ephesians chapter 1. This is seeding your spirit with the truth of dominion over the devil. So it is from that spirit, that platform, of dominion and authority that you speak and say, I command you that demon. Come out. And it will come out. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's speak it from verse 20. Okay, I think I will need it to, I will need to pick it from verse 17 so that it won't just be half statement. That he was praying, praying now for them, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. May God enjoy his inheritance in your life. Amen. God has invested in you. He's waiting for you to yield May you yield great dividends for God with what he has invested in your life in Jesus' name. And verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what? Who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which, do you know there is a mighty power that is working in you that believe? Mighty power, awesome power. Which he wrote in Christ, verse 20. Are you still reading? When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Pause there. The power, the awesome power, power of his majesty, of God, with which by the Holy Spirit he raised Jesus from the dead. 
on the third day in the grave is the same power. Can your mind take it? That's the same power that the Holy Ghost is inherent in you as built inside of your spirit. But most people, the power is unused. The power is latent. The power is unaccessed. Can you shout, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Say, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Ah! That is the great power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21, let's read together. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name. That, are you on your feet? Oh, come on, somebody. This is the power. This is the power. He set him on high. The, the same power that the Father God raised up Jesus from the dead with and set him at his own right hand. It is that same place where you are seated. You don't belong in the order of those that a goat is pursuing in your dream. A masquerade is pursuing in your dream. If not that you have moved away from the zone of life. If not that you have personally despised the glory that has been invested in your spirit. Let's take it again. He said, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21, let's go. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Verse 22, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all, th of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in her. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It is that same power that you have in the Holy Ghost that is in you. Far above all principalities, far above all powers, Far above all might, far above all dominion, far above every name that is named. You can sit down two more and take these two more scriptures. Seed your spirit with the truth of your dominion and authority. So that when the enemy shows up, you are not scared. You are not afraid. Faith cannot work when you are moving in fear. Matthew chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 1. Turn your Bibles with me quickly. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. When they say open your Bibles, we are saying strengthen your persuasion. Strengthen your conviction. I am convinced, I'm reading it, I'm convinced, I'm telling you. Strengthen that persuasion by opening your Bible. Read it yourself. It is written. It is settled. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Are you there? Can you see it with your two eyes? Matthew chapter 10. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples. At this time, they were disciples. They were not apostles yet. And this applies to believers. So, correct your mindset from thinking it is pastor that must deal with the devil. It is pastor that must pray for the sick. It is pastor that must help me bind the devil when I see a demon in my room. Rise up in the place of kingdom authority. He gave them power. What did he give them? When you read any scripture... You apply the law of identification. The Bible is our manual. It's the kingdom manual. Any scripture you take, whether you are reading from Judges, or you are reading from Ephesians, or you are reading from the Gospels, 
The first thing is to apply the law of identification. Who am I in this passage that I'm reading? In this passage that you are reading, who are you? You are the disciple that he gave power to. So don't transfer it. Don't read that place and let the devil help you to transfer. He gave them power to Apostle Peter. He gave them power. He's talking of Bimpe. He's talking of Bola. He's talking of Bayo. He's talking of Aki and James. He's talking of every believer that has accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, male or female, old or young, married or single. He gave them what? Power. Say, he gave them power. Say, he has given me power. Say, I have power. Against unclean spirits. Do you wonder? The first time, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons was the first thing. Now, he gave them power and the first thing is against unclean spirits. And the next thing the devil wants is for us to face every other thing and ignore dealing with the devil. Why must we deal with the devil? If you don't deal with the devil, the devil will deal with you. If you don't resist the devil, he will tamper with your works. You must know how to draw the line for the enemy and keep a, 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 a zone of safety to be able to walk and operate. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease. And in these two places, and I'm still going to research on some more, when he brings power for his own, it is first of all to deal with demons before dealing with sickness. Don't leave demons undealt with. I'm not saying you magnify any little thing. Before you use the Bible, I bind every spirit that is operating the black color of this Bible. That's not what I'm talking about. But anywhere we meet the devil, don't let him lie. Don't let him lie. Don't let him lie. Is that okay? And the same thing in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, he sent them out again. This time they were 70. That is to say, if somebody wants to say, ah, you better be careful. It's only the 12 apostles that Jesus allowed to cast out demons. So he gave power against unclean spirit. He gave it to every believer. That time it was the 12. This time it was the 70. They went out two by two, 35 units. And the 70 returned in verse 17. The 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to unto us through thy name. Through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Using serpents and scorpions, you have power over them. At the height of the devil's oppression, you have power over it. Not in yourself, in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus must not be just a statement on your lips. Read it. Are you reading? And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That is to say, casting out devils is just a manifestation. It's just a sign, obvious manifestation, a sign that you are a child of God. But keep being a child of God. The salvation explained that put your name in the book of life. <laughs> Don't lose touch with that. Don't lose touch. You see him bringing the balance. Bringing the balance for them. And let me round off this morning because this is a major, major, major operation of God 
for us in this place. I want to give you this assignment. All the scriptures that I've read today are more. In fact, if it's only the few ones I've read to you today, take these scriptures as a diet of authority and feed on it. Read it, take it. I'm giving a medication this morning. Take it three times a day. To help yourself, you can take it around the time you are eating, either before or after. You can take it before food. This one, it works before food or after food. Take those scriptures, read it, meditate on it. Let something open on your spirit. God puts you there in your family so that demonic things will not fester. He puts you there in that office so that demonic things will not fester. He puts you even in church so that demonic things will not fester. You know, there was one day we were having a prayer, we were having end of the year uh, prayer program. I mean, 34, watch night service, 31st into 1st. I still remember very well. We were at Elisha that time, 197 in Shoku, Elisha that time. And service was going, the presence of God came down. And whatever happens in church, you are supposed to take your own portion of that encounter into your own life, into your own world. So that as God's power come down in church, when you are told, God's power come down in your house. That's how it's supposed to be. Don't be a Christian that experiences only God when they come around the man of God or the things of God in church alone. But in their own world, they are dry. Don't be like that. And the ushers called my attention to it. And there was one lady that began to the, she wanted to fly, literally. I mean, I'm not joking. She did everything. The power of God arrested her. The presence of God was so intense in that place. The power of God arrested that spirit, that witchcraft force. A Asian demon. They have donated it from generation to generation. Every generation, it finds somebody to possess again. And you see this lady, young, beautiful girl, about 18, 19. At times she will look very old. At times she will look very young. You know, have you seen some people like that? And then the scapula blade. You know the scapula. Touch your scapula. Let me see. That uh, flat bone at the back of your began to it began to vibrate like that. Began to she wanted to fly. The thing began. She did everything. She tried to hold herself. The thing was doing kulu kulu under the... She borrowed somebody's cardigan. Wrapped herself on. The thing was vibrant, moving kulu kulu under the... And things like that. If we are all afraid of the devil, because all you keep watching at home, what are you watching at home? Aye. And they show you one in yard that is a... Powerful, controlling the whole city, killing everybody. That's why you keep watching. You have not gone to watch. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in you. You have not gone to watch how, having spoiled all principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. You will run. And quickly, you know, you can trust brethren now. They have given the distance, the sisters some distance. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. Say thank God for the Holy Ghost. Say thank God for the Holy Ghost. Of course, that spirit was just a spirit. It was just a spirit. The spirit was cast out of her because she was ready. If you don't want the devil cast out of your life, you remain there. But the day you say, spirit, I don't want you anymore. You only need somebody that have author know their authority. And say, spirit, they say they don't want you there anymore come out. And it cannot stay. It cannot stay. People have done different things that brought spirits into their lives. Once one lady was see, always having this terrible migraine headache. And on, on one of those days, the grandma came around and took her somewhere and they used black soap to wash the head. And seemingly, the headache left. 
But the following day, she started having dreams. She will dream. Dreams she doesn't have before. She will dream and she will see herself with a garden of people sharing meat, drinking. First of all, it looks like palm oil. Drinking palm oil, sharing meat, and things like that. And later, I mean, it became an active evil. Sharing, eating human flesh, drinking blood. Because you don't go to the devil's camp to receive help and go like that. The devil does not help anybody. The devil ensnares people. The devil enslaves people. The devil chains people. You go to him for power, you become his captive forever. Except you are delivered, you are, you, are, you are out of it. And that lady took the power of God to deliver her from that operation of hell that she has opened herself up onto. And some of us, we will have people like that in our families. There may be some people like that here that you are having strange experiences in your life because there's demonic trafficking. Spirits are trafficking in your life. There's one girl that came when we were at MDS that time at Toshugu, and then she, she came for counseling and ministration. She didn't want that oppression of the devil to continue in her life. And then anybody she gets angry at, that person, that day you will lose blood or die, depending on the degree of the anger. She's very angry at you. That person, something bad will just happen. The person dies brutally. If it's a mild one, so it will just be some accident, you lose some blood or whatever. That's why you must be born again. That is how people are victims to witchcraft forces when they have not given their lives to Christ. But your own case is different as a child of God. You have authority to help people to deliver people. So the girl came. And daddy, we fixed an appointment. Daddy fixed an appointment for the deliverance clinic to come for ministration. So daddy went to the Bible school students. We have been, he has been teaching them on demonology and deliverance. I say, I've got a good case for practicals. Everything I've taught you, this is the case of the girl. Everything, everything, everything he told them. And then say, 8 a.m. Saturday morning will be here to minister. When it was 6 a.m. on Saturday, it was only daddy and myself that showed up. They ran away. They disappeared. They, you can't, their phone didn't go through. They were so afraid. Why are people afraid of one girl that, eh, somebody say, eh, if she say, eh, so you are the one that wants to cast me out and kill me. How can you think like that? And why won't the girl think so you are the people that carry the power of God and be the one that run away? Why will you run away from a witch? Why won't a witch see you and run away? Seed your spirit with the truth of God's word. And I'm going to round up this, uh, this morning. I want you to rise up on your feet and hear this. Next time, when I begin to tell you, 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 you must be ready. You must be ready to cast out the devil anywhere you meet it. Whether in a person or in a place, or in a situation. Is that okay? Of course, you don't attribute a woman fully to demonic operations. That's why we need design. Your husband spoke to you. Your husband said, ah, my dear, whoop, where is my biro? I say, why are you asking me? Are you stupid? And you say, okay, let's bind the devil. The devil that wants to come into No, your wife is stupid. She doesn't know how to talk. You don't talk like that. You don't talk. Even if it's not your husband, you don't talk to normal people like that. So you don't accrue what woman folly is doing to demonic operations. I'm talking of demons here. You will meet demons because the devil shows up where he's not been invited. When I was young, I told you this story before. Over the year, I, there, when I was growing up, from like age eight till like 14, there was these skin rashes that came up on my feet, on my, to the ankle, terrible. The itching would be terrible. I would take the broom, the, the bottom of the broom, to start scratching it, it will bleed. 
the no treatment was working. And most of the time, when sicknesses are not responding to medical treatment and normal uh, healing up, there could be a spirit there. They recommended everything. After they recommended to eat liver, take malt, do all sorts of things. It didn't work. Until eventually I got a hold of the truth of God's word and started applying the scriptures. And God helped me. It was gone. Amen. <laughs> that thing left, left me. And then many years passed. I got married. You know, gave birth to children. And then one day in the night when... Uh, Pastor Joshua and Sister Peace were still, you know, kids in their youthful years. When they were children, we'd go in the night. Daddy would wake up, go into their room, pray over them in the night. It's a good thing for parents to do. Don't sleep. Your children shouldn't sleep all through the night. And you too, you are sleeping all through the night. That's careless parenting. So that night, I was the one that went into their rooms. I would go there. Sometimes they have removed cover cloth. You cover them by, you lay hands on them, release of scriptures. Plead the blood of Jesus, you know, just minister to them and then you go back to sleep. That's something good for parents to do in the night over their children. And then, so she removed cover cloth from herself. So I was trying to cover her back when she just threw her leg like this. And when she threw her leg, I saw exactly the same thing, starting like a small sack of a coin. I first of all wanted to get her free. When you want to get her free, fear, is, fear could be normal. Fear could be a spirit. But you must know when fear wants to start. The Living Jesus Ministerial Training College, the training arm of Shola Reogo Ministries, will be resuming on Monday, 3rd of January, 2022. Alleluia! According to God's servant, Reverend Olushola Areogo, it takes more than perceiving a call to fulfill it. You must be trained for it. Have you sensed the divine call on your life and want to be groomed for it? Here's another golden opportunity to be trained for the execution of the holy calling by God's servant, Reverend Olushala Ayodele Areogo, the president of the Living Jesus Ministerial Training College, Oshogbo, Ocean State, Nigeria, who does it the Elijah Elijah way with other well-seasoned men of God. Here are the models available this new session. 18 months full-time Bible school, 24 months part-time Bible school, weekend only, 24 months online Bible school, 12 months special ministerial training. These happen every first Saturday of the month for ministers already in active ministry. 12 months many ministry mentorship program. It happens every third Saturday of the month. 12 months women in ministry mentorship program happens every third Saturday of the month. Three months school of wealth happens weekend only. Register today at the ljmtc.org or visit our office at the Living Jesus Ministerial Training College, Oshogbo, Ocean State, Nigeria. For inquiries, please call 0907 991 2254. Every Christian graduate can give this one year to God before you go for the NYSC or immediately after. Remember, every man is ordinary until he is trained. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Now 